where we get to take a deep dive into some of Singularity Net's amazing, innovative, technical advances and the projects that we're working on. We're so excited today to be here. I've got uh, Matt E. Clay, Alexei Potapov, and Ben will be joining shortly. And we get to dive into an overview of OpenCog Hyperon. So how are we building beneficial AGI with OpenCog Hyperon? Why are we building this platform and, and what is it all about? And taking a dive in with, with our experts. So uh, Matt, Alexei, perhaps a, a brief introduction to yourselves and, and what you're most focused on in working on OpenCog. So I'm Matt Eclay, and I uh, have been working with Ben for a number of decades. Um, and um, I am currently um, serving as chief science officer. And, and what I'm really focusing on um, is a lot of the cognitive algorithms and pulling how to how to get things aligned um, after the meta alpha is released um, and i'm really excited uh, about i have a, a number of thoughts on on how to actually um, achieve you know ben's uh, idea of cognitive synergy amongst all the different algorithms so that they work together to really achieve AGI. And in such a way, um, I think that um, it's pretty clear how we can align all of that uh, for beneficial um, for beneficial AGI. And that's where my thoughts are primarily focused right now, less so on the technical, but that'll come in later on. Thanks, Matt. And Alexei? Yeah, my <laughs> name is uh, Alex Potapov, and uh, hi, Ben, <laughs> and hi, everyone. Hey. Uh, and uh, I'm a Chief AGI Officer uh, at SingularityNet now. Uh, I, I've been working uh, in uh, AGI field for more than two decades, uh, and uh, I'm working with Ben with, uh, like uh, uh, nearly 10 years. Uh, uh, and uh, my focus uh, right now is uh, a design of uh, uh, meta language uh, and uh, I would say an, a frameworkish approach uh, to AGI. So I'm interested uh, uh, not in uh, very, very particular mm -hmm. cognitive algorithms, but uh, uh, in uh, uh, such a framework which uh, will allow uh, different uh, uh, researchers, programmers and users uh, uh, to implement uh, their own vision. Uh, of course, uh, it's um, uh, our framework are not uh, extremely general to be able to uh, implement everything. Uh, but uh, and, and of course, uh, there are of course biases uh, towards uh, our vision of AGI. And uh, uh, what uh, Matt uh, said is of course. Uh, uh, the first uh, use case for such frameworks, uh, but uh, in any case, uh, uh, my interest uh, is uh, uh, in uh, this uh, uh, more uh, uh, general toolkits uh, for designing uh, cognitive uh, components and so on. Thanks, Alexei. It's wonderful. And Ben, thank you very much. Uh, uh, perhaps I. I CEO of Singularity Net. I don't think you need more introduction um, to, to this audience, but perhaps you could kick us off with um, an overview of what is OpenCog Hyperon? Yeah, I, I mean, that, this, this uh, has been discussed in a, a load of uh, videos and talks uh, before, so I'm going to keep that brief, and uh, I think it'll be more fun for Alexei and Matt and myself to talk about where we see things going during during the rest of the year with it with with hyperon but i mean there's on a software level opencog hyperon is the new version of the opencog agi framework and, and system and there was a software system 
called Open Cog, which some of us now refer to as Open Cog Classic, which we created in 2008 by open sourcing some code that originated back in 2001 too. And this uh, Open Cog system already had the two aspects that Alexei just alluded to. We're sort of building it as a reasonably general purpose framework for creating AGI systems or practical applied software systems with AGI-ish aspects, which is a very fuzzy category. And it was also intended as a way of fleshing out and building up a specific AGI approach that, that I and some colleagues had had in, in mind. And I'd say OpenCog Classic was reasonably successful in giving a sort of playground for experimenting with a variety of ideas related to AGI. Um, I also built to get, together with a team of others a number of commercial applications, mostly on, on the back end of other people's software systems using using uh, OpenCog Classic system. But there were a couple clear weaknesses of the OpenCog Classic system that emerged over the years. I mean, in essence, usability and uh, scalability were the crux of it, and also a lack of flexibility in some some key aspects. So in terms of scalability, I mean, what we need is to be able to build a huge knowledge base. And the, the central component of OpenCog is what's called the atom space, which is a knowledge metagraph, so a weighted labeled typed metagraph. And this can live in RAM on the machine, or it can live distributed in RAM across many different machines. Portions can be saved to disk or whatever fancy storage mechanism you have. Then there's a variety of AI agents that can act on this distributed knowledge metagraph, reading out the knowledge there, putting knowledge back in. They're using that knowledge metagraph to store intermediate information and, and, and states as, as they process. So in essence, the OpenCog Classic metagraph was too slow in terms of many of the operations that you need to deal with it. It wasn't too slow to do some interesting things and learn something. But if we look at what's been learned from the success of large language models and other deep neural nets recently, part of what's been learned is that having a fast implementation of an AI method and then using it to process huge amounts of data on a lot of processors can, can cause minor variations on familiar algorithms to do, do amazingly better things, right? No, not, not that there's nothing new in transformer neural nets, but they're not, they're not that new compared to various recurrent and attention based architectures existed before. But running on a lot of data, a lot of processors gave amazing new results, but that, that required a scalable implementation. I mean, usability also played a role. Certainly the, the whole standard ML pipeline where you have a bunch of libraries coded in QDRC or C or whatever that you combine together in Python scripts. I mean, this, this was a way that allowed, you know, AI researchers with very little software engineering or computer science knowledge to to play around and do some do some cool things with deep neural networks so open cog classic was sort of the opposite end of the spectrum regarding usability i mean it wasn't that hard to get started and do very simple things but to, to build a system using open cog classic required just a fair bit of knowledge expertise and and patience and then the Alexei and uh, his colleague uh, Vitaly Bogdanov, who's working with us now on Meta, in it would have been 2018 or so, put in a bunch of work connecting OpenCog Classic to deep neural networks, in this case, originally for computer vision applications. But I, I, I mean, this, you could do it, but it was awkward and you had some inflexibilities in the, in the underlying architecture. So it's, it's always a hard choice to make, one to 
start over almost from scratch and start rebuilding something. And because you can spend a lot of time rebuilding basics that already were working in your previous system before you get to the point of doing something new. So we thought about that quite, quite hard, but then the 2021, I guess it was, we, we, we made the decision. We need to build a new version of, of open cog. And we realized it would end up rewriting pretty much all the code. Although many of the ideas, representations and algorithm algorithms carry, carry over. So it, it is, conceptually a continuation of the of the previous version now open cog classic still exists and is being carried forward by linus vepstas who had been the lead developer of that project and it's it's great to have a diversity of tools so we can have you know a wide variety of, of ex experiments going on but i think i think the hype around design you know it's built it's built for flexibility, scalability, and usability. Using everything we learned in experimentation with OpenCog Classic over the years and decades, and also learning what's using what's been learned in, in the AI field more, more, more generally. Right. So we we have a new distributed atom space whose development has been led by Andre Senna, who actually coded the first version of the Novamente AI engine, which then turned into OpenCog. So he wrote the, he actually wrote the first atom space, but now he's written the distributed atom space for, for Hyperon. And then the other core component, the most core component is the meta AI language, whose development Alexei and, and Vitaly have, have spearheaded, which is sort of, it's a, it's a language where programs are parts of the atom space knowledge metagraph and what the programs do is principally take in parts of the atom space metagraph and put out other other parts of that of that metagraph so it's sort of a knowledge metagraph native programming language and then since since metacode is part of the knowledge metagraph that meta programs are acting on it's very natural to do self-modifying code or code programs that rewrite each other and so forth, which is <coughs> is a sort of reflection that I think you you ultimately need to create AGIs at at, at, at the human level and 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 beyond. So yeah, where 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 we're at with the project now, after very much work by by many people, I mean we have we have first working versions of distributed M space and meta language interpreter we're pretty close to declaring that we have an alpha version which is a moderately arbitrary designation be, i mean be, because because you know when you say something in alpha that means you can still make breaking changes to it and revise things sub substantially whereas the default definition of a beta version is you're not changing too much and sort of the public APIs and interfaces of it. You're just making it more stable, speeding things up behind the scenes. Alpha means we're still going to make significant changes. There's still a bunch of, of, of work to be done, but it also means we're considering it a decent time to pull in experts from the community to help us make the transition from, from alpha to beta. Whereas for much of the time up till now, we've sort of felt like we just need to clean up and finish a few things before before it would help rather than than hinder to pull in pull in a broader community. So what will happen during the rest of the year? We have a number of parallel related efforts underway to scale up and speed up the meta interpreter. So it works now. We're writing AI code using it. That's very, very cool. On the other hand, we need a big leap forward in, ter in terms of uh, the speed with which large scale AI programs will run using Meta. This can be achieved in a in a variety of different ways, and we're doing a bunch of experiments regarding different different ways to do this. Now, in parallel, we're going through a learning process of how to implement different AGI oriented algorithms in in Meta, even though we can't run them yet 
at the speed and, and scale we'd like, we can we can still understand how, how, how to best work them into the particularities of hyper own architecture. And here here we get in to the cognitive architecture rather than software architecture level, right? So Hyperon can be used to implement a variety of different approaches to, to AGI. As an example, Patrick Hammer and Peter Isiev are now using it to implement a version of the NARS, non-axiomatic reasoning system, which was pioneered by my good friend Pei Wang over many decades. You could also use Hyperon to implement say a biologically realistic neural neural network or you or you, or you could you, you could you could use it to implement a, a logic theorem prover right now my own greatest interest is in using hyperon to to implement a cognitive architecture which i'm now calling primus which was previously called cog prime but i decided i didn't i didn't like that 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 name anymore so we have you know elon Elon Musk has the Optimus robot, so I figured we, we've got it. For for those who are fans of the Transformers universe, I figure we we have to go one, one, one step further. I mean, Optimus is a big, powerful robot, but Primus is is the ultimate source of of of, of all good and, and positive energy in, in the universe, right? So, but no jokes about the name aside. I mean, the Primus cognitive architecture, previously called Cog Prime. I've given a bunch of lectures about before, went over it in some detail in a multiple video series on the general theory of general intelligence that you can find on, on YouTube. But it, it attempts to boil down into tractable algorithmic form all the different types of memory, reasoning, learning, perception, action, so on that happens in, 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 the, in the human-like mind. And that's certainly a long story, but one of the high level requirements in mind when designing Hyperon is that we should be able to finally experiment with the primus cognitive architecture at, at large scale. And if that's the only thing that happens with Hyperon, we're not unhappy. On the other hand, if others build very cool, different AGI ish things in Hyperon, that's also good as is happening already with NARS. But I think even if that doesn't happen, having a certain layering in the architecture makes sense. Like it, 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 it's nice to have a flexible, as simple as possible infrastructure that's not totally tangled with your your cognitive architecture. Then build the cognitive architecture on top of it. I mean, human human brains and biological systems do get very tangled up among among the levels. But that's part of the reason why the human brain is so hard to up, upgrade and, and 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 modify, right? And we're we're trying to do things much more cleanly. So yeah, that's that's sort of where we're at now. We have a basic working hyperon version, which is really cool. And in parallel, we're working on scaling it up and then on, on prototyping, putting various AI algorithms, including NARS and pieces of the Primus architecture, putting them into into hyperon and then there's of course when you dig deeper there's a lot more complexity like uh, alexei is working on a sort of general purpose inference framework which would run on hyperon and which would simplify the implementation of a bunch of different cognitive algorithms in, inside primus and, and and otherwise so there's there's many 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 layers here and it's an exciting time to be doing stuff like this because we have the tooling to do such experimentation much faster than was the case even say five years ago and there's so much enthusiasm in the world for this sort of work that i'm 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 quite psyched about over the next couple of years how much engagement we're going to be able to get from the open source development world to i mean because our we have a very strong team in singular net foundation and in true agi it's a spin-off company that's also working intensively on hyperon but uh, uh, on the other hand while our team is awesome the vision is even bigger than than our team can can can, can do on our own Yes, amazing. Yes, thank you, Ben, for, for all of that. Some of these foundational aspects of 
maximum flexibility, maximum scalability, maximum interoperability, creating a, a framework that anybody can use and build on, creating the tools that anybody needs to 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 make that work. And then just the the team that you've already accumulated or, or singularity that's already accumulated and, and true AGI just seeing all the experts that have been joining our systems and our thinkers because they're so excited about this direction over the past years has, has been amazing. And seeing all the new technologies that we're, we're pulling in as well that, that hopefully we can dive into in, in future sessions. So one of the centers of flexibility and interoperability, of course, is, as you've said, the, the meta language that enables connecting it enables connecting all these AI algorithms natively within the the data store itself, the knowledge store itself, the the atom space. Alexa, can you speak a little to the the thinking behind Meta and why we decided that we needed to build this language and what we're aiming for in in creating it? Uh, well, well uh, basically. Uh, our initial intention uh, was uh, to uh, improve uh, OpenCock uh, Classic, uh, which we call it now uh, in terms of uh, uh, usability, as uh, Ben mentioned, and uh, uh, introduce uh, some uh, novel uh, ideas uh, from math, computer science, and uh, uh, AGI. Uh, and uh, OpenCock Classic uh, already had uh, a sort of language uh, called uh, Atomis. Uh, it uh, was initially a pattern matching uh, query language uh, for knowledge uh, metagraphs. Uh, but uh, um, uh, practice showed that uh, uh, when we are solving uh, tasks uh, uh, with the use of uh, such uh, uh, knowledge metagraph uh, queries uh, we uh, need and uh, uh, want to introduce uh, some additional functionality uh, which uh, uh, which starts to turn uh, this uh, uh, language uh, uh, qu query uh, la language into a sort of uh, programming language and uh, actually uh, every uh, maybe not every, but <laughs> most of uh, cognitive architectures uh, uh, develop uh, the uh, cognitive language, uh, uh, which is a sort of uh, firmware for uh, these uh, architectures. Uh, and we do not pose uh, our meta language uh, as a general purpose programming language. So it's not like we decided uh, to develop uh, a new language. Uh, it uh, was a natural evolution of uh, uh, open cock uh, architecture <clears throat> and uh, it's uh, actually quite typical for uh, many cognitive architectures so the basic uh, idea behind uh, meta language uh, uh, is uh, very close uh, to uh, its uh, processor uh, atomis so it is built uh, on top of uh, queries to uh, uh, metagraph storage, uh, but uh, uh, in the course of uh, rethinking uh, the design of uh, OpenCock Classic, uh, uh, we found out that uh, uh, these uh, queries to knowledge uh, graphs, uh, uh, they are very similar to uh, queries in uh, probabilistic languages, to pattern matching is fun in functional programming, uh, to uh, different sorts of uh, lo lo logic uh, languages like uh, Prolog uh, and uh, a, a lot of uh, other stuff. Uh, so we uh, unified this uh, sort of uh, uh, queries and uh, uh, it uh, turned out to be uh, quite a convenient way to uh, unify uh, probabilistic programming, logical programming, uh, functional programming, and the queries to uh, knowledge graphs. Uh, so basically, this is, uh, and uh, I, I would actually add that even in transformer networks, uh, what attention heads are doing is uh, also a sort of queries. Uh, so uh, it uh, seems like uh, this idea to build uh, uh, a language and cognitive processes on top of uh, querying. Uh, some storages like uh, knowledge metagraphs or 
uh, any other storages because in Hyperon we can have uh, not just an atom space but also different uh, kinds of spaces is a very powerful unification uh, for different uh, cognitive processes. Uh, is it an answer to the question? <laughs> oh. Absolutely. Yeah, I think. Yes. So, yeah. I, I would. I would. I would add, Haley. I think there's been a common failure mode in the AI field of AI researchers deciding they need a better programming language, and then their AI work will go better. So they invent a new programming language, and then like. 20 years later, they realize they've become programming language researchers and have, have made no progress on, 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 on AI, right? And the, I mean, that's a, that's a bit of a caricature, but it's, a, it's, it's so, sort of been true. And it, it's certainly true that the, the AI advances that were hoped to follow from the introduction of even Lisp and Prolog, which are great and very successful languages, I mean, didn't didn't quite happen, right? And there's been been a lot of other other similar examples where neither programming language progress nor nor AI progress really, really happens. So for that reason, I was very wary to get into making a new language because, you know, it just takes a long time. Like, I mean, like, for example, I started with Haskell in 92, 93 programming and tried to build my own Haskell interpreter then just to see how it was done. It was a good 10 years after that before Haskell really became usable for commercial stuff or the introduction of, of IOMAD and a bunch of more efficiency in, 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 the, in the interpreter and compiler and so on. So it just, it's a whole thing, right? It takes a long time to build, to build, build a language. But we, we just got to the point where we had a lot of specific stuff that we wanted to do and we knew that specific stuff could be better done in in a language such as uh, as alexei and his his team have have created so it wasn't so much like build a new language and then figure out exactly exactly what to do with it like we we, we are we already know a lot of stuff we want to do with it not not that amazing new things won't emerge though once once experimenting with the tool which is what which is what what always always happens but uh, yeah I, I think it's important what Alexei said that like we're, we're not planning to write the next version of candy crush in meta right like this is I mean this is not a it doesn't have to be a language it's good for doing every every possible thing then exactly how meta ends up being used in a sort of multi-language development approach we're gonna be open to ex experimentation on that right like i mean alexei has done a lot of things where you you're writing a lot of python and then using python to to call meta for specific things but you could also you could also do it in a in a in a quite different way and he, he and his team have done other things that are, that are more more pure meta experiments, right? So that the framework should be should be fairly flexible. Ralph in the chat asked, "Will we have a beta version released this year?" I don't want to promise that. I mean, I I, I don't think it's going to be twenty twenty six. Whether it's this year or early next year depends on on how partly on how the various experiments in scaling up the meta interpreter go and and then how the building of various libraries proceeds and and and, and so forth i mean I, I look at beta as a little bit less arbitrary as as alpha because after you have a beta you're not supposed to make breaking changes and and deprecate things constantly so I, th I think we're probably on track to have a beta within roughly the next year. We, we would like it as, so as soon as, as possible also. But uh, I also think we're already making AI R&D headway and we can, we can do that with the, with the alpha version also. So. 
I would just make one quick follow up uh, about about the development of Meta. I think it's pretty amazing what Alexei and his team and others at Singularity Net have done in a for in terms of program design and program implementation in a quite short time. That's why I don't. I think we started about less than two years ago. So. Just well, yeah, a, that's right. This is this this would take five plus years in the ordinary course of development of weird programming languages, and then that what we're trying to do with scaling up the interpreter this year is also certainly what would be five or ten years of work packed 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 into a year. I mean, if you if you just look at weird functional languages like a, a say address or Ag agda or languages like this that, that are unusual in the body advanced computer science i mean generally these have been more academic driven and the speed at which they've developed has been way slower than than than, than what we're doing i mean we have <clears throat> we have the advantage of having an awesome like full-time professional software team rather than using grad students, which is how, how many of these languages have, have developed in their early, early stages. But I, 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 I do think once we get to a beta version, we're going to see a big infusion of uh, help coming from industry users. And this, this may be really powerful in terms of, Usability and de de development environments, and also in terms of libraries connecting Meta to various ex ex external resources and, and so forth. Because there's there's a lot to be done there, which corporate users will want, and which corporate development teams also also know how to add. Right, and so this is an interesting thing. If you look at how Linux developed, of course, just random developers from everywhere around the world pitching in was very important, but corporate users taking Linux, integrating in their enterprise workflows and, 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 and then making improvements needed for that also played a, a, a huge, huge role. And this, this ties in with what our, our company true AGI is doing, which is bringing hype around to, to enterprise. So, I mean, I, I think, Obviously, with Singularity Net, we're looking to, in some ways, create a new decentralized business ecosystem using using utility tokens, and we're looking to make sure that HEI, as it advances, is not owned and controlled by any small number of parties. So, something we haven't talked about much, but we're in the in this in this uh, particular session, but we're we're also working on integrating. Hyperon with Singularity Net Platform, HyperCycle, and and NuNet, so that you can run a network of Hyperon nodes in a decentralized way. We're also looking at using the Meta language as a smart contract language in, in, inside the the HyperCycle blockchain. So that that's all there and is very very important. On the other hand, it doesn't mean that traditional corporations can't and won't play a role in, in beefing up the whole Hyperon code ecosystem. And the, this, as was seen in the development of Linux, I mean, this is part of the beauty of, of open source, right? I mean, you want, you want a really wide collaborative community. It's fine that big companies in various vertical markets are, are part of that collaborative community you just don't want a dynamic where one company is 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 dominating the the, the, the whole thing right. absolutely and i've heard the development team talk about how meta is not just a, a language it's a it's a way of thinking um and this is again why you can do it in in, in python or, or other I, mean, I, I would say there are many programming paradigms right so you could say list from prologue are ways of thinking also so I mean, you have logic programming, you have, you, have, you have functional programming, you have dependently typed programming, like in Coq or Agda, which are or Idris, which, which, which are more, more, more obscure. And I, I, mean, I mean, in that sense, 
meta differs substantially from any of these other languages. So it is, it is sort of a different programming paradigm and one that I have not yet wrapped my brain around very fully as a practical programmer. Although, although from a, from a theory standpoint, I get it. I mean, I know when, when I started screwing around with Idris and Agda languages, I was amazed how different the way of thinking was from programming Haskell, even though Idris sort of looks like Haskell, like the addition of dependent types ties your brain in a knot in a, in a different way. And uh, I mean, then, Meta is 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 a, is a is a bit like that. There's quite different ways of thinking and, and doing things. Now, I would say mostly, in the long run, Meta is for Meta to program in, right? I mean, most most code in an AGI's mind should be created by AI, not 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 by human beings. So we don't have to fully be able to wrap our brains around how to code in Meta. We just have to code the seed and understand understand it well enough to code the seed that will. That will write write the rest of the of of of, of the code, right? And, but of course, this is the trend that the programming world in the whole is 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 going in, right? Like, I mean, I mean, LLMs can write a lot of code that humans need to have to write have to write anyway. But even still, even though the AI is going to write most of its own code at this point. At least some humans have got to wrap their wrap their brain around the peculiar way of of, uh, of thinking that 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 meta implies. Yeah, and if uh, if if you like the new programming languages, it's it's a lot of fun because it is a different way of thinking. Thanks, Ben. Um, and then. Um, Matt, you've been working quite deeply in the the Primus architecture and our cognitive algorithms, PLN, pattern matcher, starting to dive into pulling econ into into architecture. Can you talk a little bit about how Meta will connect these different cognitive algorithms and 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 how that's critical to the development of AGI? Sure. Um, I mean. I, I, the, I, to that for me, the, the, the main idea in order to achieve AGI is how all of these various pieces, these various algorithms come together and, and integrate and integrate and to achieve emergent behaviors in, in a way that are aligned with ethical um, AGI. But all of that has to happen on some underlying computational framework. And, and really that, and, and that's why Meta was, from my perspective, Meta, we designed Meta the way that we did. It's very flexible. As Ben mentioned, it's actually inside the, the, the atom space. So it's connecting pieces of the atom space and it's inside the atom space, it's working together, uh, and how to really have this computational layer that is in, that incredibly flexible as a foundation is what's key to getting all of these various architectures, whether it's the Primus, arch whether it's the Primus algorithms and the architecture there, or what other people uh, would use Meta to connect and, and, and so on. I don't know if that gets at your, at the question. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that, that flexibility is, is so critical there. And then perhaps we can all touch just a little bit on the, the other core component we've, we've touched on some, the distributed atom space where all of this comes together. Meta allows different AI algorithms, different pieces of knowledge, probabilities, uh, all types of information to come together in that, that atom space. How does the, the distributed atom space, how is it distributed? How is that helpful for building AGI? And, and can you just talk a little towards that interoperability, scalability, and all these um, components that the distributed atom space is bringing to OpenCog Hyperon? 
for no one in particular. I, I uh, Andre not oh, being yeah, here. Oh yeah, we're missing we're missing us. Senna, who's the expert on distributed yes. space. I mean the distributed M space. Not that it's simple in its in its guts, but I mean what what it provides is at first pass a relatively simple thing. The atom space it's a knowledge repository with a bunch of nodes and links representing various sorts of knowledge and the atom space as used by the meta interpreter is live in 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 ram for rapid manipulation and access but eventually atom spaces get too big so you want to save them onto disk or various other forms of storage and then you may want to split up among many many different machines so the distributed atom space it's basically a backup store for 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 an, for an atom space and i mean it's built now on 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 top of a uh, mongodb and, and and redis as as infrastructures but using them in, in unusual ways so i mean for for uh develop cloud developers i mean we, we're using mongo to store the atoms and redis to store various in, in indexes and th those work together in in particularly scripted way so I, I mean there's a bunch of interesting questions we're still working on like exactly how flexible can the pattern matcher that hits the distributed atom space be so the a lot of what happens inside a meta program is calling the atom space pattern matcher, which has a certain pattern or, or template and tries to find nodes and links in the atom space that match match that that template. So it could be like, you know, everything that Haley knows how to juggle, right? And so then then you would search through the atom space to find all nodes representing things that, that, that Haley can juggle, or it could be could it could be all historical records of the execution trace of a certain program, right? It could be a lot of things. So the meta language lets you specify a pattern to be matched in the M space quite flexibly because disk is different than RAM. The distributed M space has a more rigid set of restrictions on what patterns you can, you can match. And we're still sort of talking through how, how broad could you, could you make that and still and still have it work? Like in in computer science terms, the meta pattern matcher can do a form of what's called uni variable unification, and 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 the the distributed atom space pattern matcher is much more restricted in in, in that way. So that there's plenty of things still to work out, but I mean on on the whole, that's a component which is is clearly needed and and is is a uh, relatively mature now we've been happy to have andre Sena building that you can also make a distributed atom space into a decentralized atom space in a fairly straightforward way i mean distributed atom space is already a bunch of different nodes living on different machines so that so that, that that's just a matter of using decentralized protocols for communication bet between the different different lobes in a distributed atom space i think there's also potential for distributed atom space to help in the blockchain layer eventually. So like Hypercycle doesn't have a ledger because it uses the total ledgerless blockchain. But even though it doesn't have a ledger wired in at the guts, it can still use a ledger if, if you have a, a ring within Hypercycle that wants a ledger, right? So then in that case, you know, could you store a ledger in a in an atom space, right? And then distributed atom space is a way to persist that. So there, there's a lot, lot of a lot of interesting directions thing can take, but at, at, at base, it's a relatively simple thing. I mean, the subtleties are to make access fast. How do you automatically build the right indexes in the distributed M space? And then can you use some AI for the caching policy? Because in the distributed M space, things that are probably going to be needed soon are pulled up into RAM. And things that probably aren't going to be needed soon to push back into disk. So even though distributed atom space it's focused on long-term background storage, there's a cache which is in RAM, which gives rapid access to some things. So you can use AI, 
you can use attention allocation like Matt and I have done research on for years, decades actually. You can use some AI attention allocation for cash management within distributed atom space, which is something uh, under Andre Senna is now working on also. So yeah, I mean, each of these things becomes a deep and winding uh, rabbit hole if you choose choose to to go into it. And in terms of the open source community, you know, there, there are hundreds of people on this planet who are experts on advanced and adaptive cash management policies for graph databases, not thousands, but probably hundreds, right? So, I mean, so, I mean, pulling in some of those people to take what Andre Senna is doing and make it better and better is among, among the many cool things that, that we hope to happen as we go hyper on as, as, as an open source project. Yeah, that's uh, amazing. Um, so the origins of the name OpenCog, you know, openness is is built into it, not just the code, but also the data, the deployment, the governance. And then we have a, a question from the audience, you know, kind of related to these topics. How does SingularNet in, uh, from Nani, how does SingularityNet envision the role of decentralization and open source development in shaping the safety, accessibility, and ethical development of AGI? Well... I probably have nothing new to say on that topic, but as I've expressed many times, my best guess is that we're more likely to get a benevolent AGI if a broad swath of humanity collaborates in creating it and then in controlling and managing it once it's it's launched. Given that the alternative is some small self-appointed elite group of people controlling and, and, and doing everything. I think a broader, more democratic and participatory group on the whole will probably do better. That doesn't give you any guarantee, obviously. And the situation there is similar to with Linux or the internet. I mean, presumably China's, Russia's and the US's guided missiles use embedded Linux, right? On the other hand, so does essentially every piece of medical equipment in every hospital. So, I mean, when you roll out something open for the world, it will be used for good or for bad. So far, the human species puts more genius into good applications than than, than destructive ones. And that that is my hope and expectation as, as regard the future of AI. Thanks, Ben. Thanks very much. So we're rolling out the Meta Alpha release uh, next month sometime. Alexa, can you speak a little to what that looks like, how people can get involved, and and who Meta is optimized for, who you would like to see get involved in this oh, next I thought, stage? I thought you were going to give him the question about whether we will, when will we reach the point where we ask AGI what to have for dinner each evening? <laughs> and, and and let us know when will we reach the point where we have to ask AGI what we ha what we're going to have for dinner. Oh well, no! If you have to ask it, I mean, you, that, I, thought, I thought it said have to, but we can. I mean, the well, in fact, we could ask Chat GPT what to have dinner tonight anyway. So uh, I mean, I, I, I haven't I haven't tried it yet. You may not like yet. the answer, but well, it depends. If you feed if you feed it what you ate for the last couple of months, it probably will be fine, right? Offload right. that cognition too. <laughs> we we won't have to think of anything fairly fairly shortly. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, to the question about uh, alpha release because uh, personally I uh, like the question about uh, uh, one question to AGI. <laughs> and uh, if uh, answer that one. Uh, answer that one too yeah if uh, it is uh, not uh, an aj uh, which uh, is uh, created by us uh, then i would uh, like to ask how to create aj <laughs> and uh, if uh, it is an uh, aj uh, well a is created by us or uh, i mean uh, in a decentralized uh, way uh, so we don't uh, need to compete with it uh, in a more beneficial and decentralized way, then I would uh, actually really like uh, to ask uh, the question about uh, as the origins of our reality. I, I mean, I'm really curious uh, if uh, our 
universe uh, is uh, the only universe uh, that exists uh, and uh, if it is ever physically possible uh, to travel beyond our universe so, uh, you might have to wait for asi i'm not sure yeah uh, and uh, as for alpha release uh, well as uh, uh, ben uh, mentioned uh, uh, this uh, release will uh, uh, not be uh, like uh, great in the stone so uh, there will be definitely changes and uh, actually it's uh, a kind of a uh, beginning of our road uh, because we are just uh, starting uh, to experiment with uh, uh, different uh, cognitive algorithms uh, inference control uh, and other stuff and uh, uh, it, it will evolve further so uh, it is uh, it uh, could be used uh, in uh, some uh, re restricted way because we also have uh, uh, some applications of uh, meta and hyperon al already uh, with uh, uh, neural symbolic uh, uh, integration with uh, large language models uh, uh, which is used in uh, singularity net assistant and uh, uh, querying uh, by atom space uh, uh, and so on so it, it uh, uh, can be considered uh, for applications uh, but uh, you should not expect too much because uh, uh, there is uh, still too many things to do in terms of uh, scalability in terms of uh, uh, specific uh, cognitive uh, content uh, uh, improved uh, reasoning uh, uh, inference control, uh, uh, querying of uh, distributed uh, huge uh, uh, knowledge graphs, uh, and so on. So uh, this uh, alpha release will uh, still be for uh, early adopters uh, who is uh, uh, interested in uh, the topic and uh, uh, sees uh, some connections uh, of their own vision on AGI uh that uh, can be aligned uh, to uh, our vision uh, so uh, i believe uh, uh, it's uh, for agi researchers uh, in the first place uh, in some cases uh, it's uh, for some uh, restricted scope of uh, applications but uh, please don't expect too much so i i would say uh, agi researchers uh, uh, is the most uh, um Mm, expected uh, uh, class of early adopters for metal theories. So Haley, by the way, Chat GPT, when told you live in Hawaii and like health food, it recommends mahi 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 with tropical salsa and then crispy cricket topped seared tuna salad. See, if they told me where, I would go check it out. Uh, uh, most everything here is crispy. It's it's super deep fried, unfortunately. The poke is We, we, have, a, we have a recipe for cricket top, crispy cricket top uh, salad. So, I just need, yeah. I just yeah. need crickets. <laughs> I got to get the, well, shoot the chickens it, out of the yard. Your, your son can collect some, right? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. I hope so, actually. Uh, it's supposed to be a great protein source. We've, we've talked about raising them. Um, there you go. So we, we've already we've already solved the dinner problem, and we can we and can sustainability. Focus, we leave that leave that to Chat GPT. We can focus up a cog on figuring out how to travel to other dimensions instead, and, yeah. and understand the origins of of the universe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Of 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 reality. Fantastic. Thank you very much for being here today, all of you. Uh, I look forward to more deep dives into all of this. You just touched on, Alexei, the bio atom space and, and everything we're doing uh, towards Rejuve Bio and longevity, which has been an amazing driver for OpenCog and is just an amazing use case for beneficial AGI. I also want to say we just recently announced uh, AGI 24, the 2024 AGI Society Technical Conference on AGI. And that'll be August 13th in Seattle, Washington. So uh, I it's hope actually everybody four can days. tune in. So it's, it's August 13th, 13th, August 13th to 16th. And this is, a, this is the AGI research conference we've had every year since 2008, following the initial AGI workshop in 2006. It's been in different places around, around the world. I'm, a, I'm stuck now 
for the second time we'll have it here in 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 seattle area where, where, where i'm based and where, where of course there's all sorts of ai development going on in, in the seattle seattle software industry but i, I think uh, going to be quite an interesting time for an, uh, an agi conference given everything going on with with hyperon but also elsewhere elsewhere in, in in the field so if if future the call for papers is is still open and the call for uh, for workshops and and, and so forth and uh, otherwise if you can please join us uh at university of washington campus in mid-august if you can't make it physically there there's there's a online option as well things will be live streamed and we'll have some some online discussions and go to so that's the uh, agi-conf.org you can see that the, the website for the AGI conference series and i think there was a link in the the comments as well thank you very much to our our, our lovely moderators today and i think ray kurzweil may be speaking there so yeah. some good stuff to look forward we to will serve, we will serve cricket topped seared cricket tuna topped as well. <laughs> or, or maybe maybe salmon for the pacific northwest right yeah all right thanks a lot everyone